Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Shall I? Yes. Today I'll be presenting a case of 57 year old female who presented to our ER with complaints of weakness of bilateral upper limb and lower limb weakness. On 10 second assessment, patient was conscious, oriented, obeying commands. Airway was patent, no secretion, gurgling or pooling of saliva. On breathing, patient had a respiratory rate of 20 per minute with a saturation of 100%. There was adequate chest excursions and it was normal vesicular breath sounds with bilateral air entry equal. So what do you mean by 10 second assessment? Initial, medicine. initial 10 second assessment, uh, we uh, look overall on the airway, breathing, circulation okay. and the disability of the patient okay. so that we can get a quick assessment of the patient and move okay. on to the uh, part which is compromised. So we want compromised. to know whether this patient requires any emergency attention or we can evaluate the patient, we can take time to evaluate it. It's a part of triaging in the emergency room. Okay. On coming to the circulation, patient had a BP of 110 bar 78 mm Hg with a pulse rate of 61 per minute and all peripheral pulses were felt equally. On disability, patient had a GCS of 15 out of 15 with pupils equal and reactive to light. Exposure, patient was febrile and GRBS was 119 milligrams per deciliter. So at this point of time, we had only known that the patient had bilateral weakness of both upper limb and lower limb, which was acute in onset. So we had taken a VBG, which showed a pH of 7.3, PCO2 26, uh, bicarbonate of 14.3 with a potassium level of 1.6 and the chlorine level was 129. All right. Chloride level was 129. So, it was showing a normal anionic gap metabolic acidosis. Where will you get hyperchlorine? Um, hyperchlorine, if uh, the patient has been corrected with uh, normal saline. Normal. Over usage of normal saline can sometimes produce uh, hyperchlorine acidosis. Is that clinically important? Yes. Hmm? Because the anion gap may get over corrected. Is that clinically uh, important, uh, like uh, we need to interfere or intervene in, in that case? This problem occurs when we are overcorrecting the patient uh, with uh, like trauma, mm -hmm. diabetic ketosis, HHS, all these conditions, you can get this. But this can only produce a problem when you are interpreting the pH level. So pH will be falsely it will be getting erected. Mm -hmm. That's all. Otherwise, it, uh, it does not have any major clinical implication in your practice. Okay. Then we had uh, taken the ECG of a patient which showed normal sinus rhythm with ST depression and T wave was absent with a prominent U wave in the chest leads. QTC was showing 505. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, so we had a working diagnosis of hypokalemic periodic paralysis because the potassium level was 1.6 and the ECG showed values of uh, symptom, like ECG was showing hypokalemic features. Okay. So Where that else you get UV? Prominent UV. You mm -hmm. yes, are seen in hypokalemia, okay. everybody know. Mm -hmm. I am asking where else you see. Which other condition mimics hypokalemia? It is always coexistent with uh, hypokalemia. What is that condition? Magnesium. So there also you get si similar changes. Mm. So it is sometimes normally also you can see uh, uh, U waves. Where is U waves well well seen? Which leads you can see properly? Chest leads can. Okay. Uh, at this point of time, we had sent an urine po uh, spot potassium and also a serum magnesium levels were sent. Mm. Uh, at this point of time, we had put uh, two IV cannulas. One was uh, EJV was inserted for the patient and then potassium correction was started for the patient at 40 milli equivalents in 500 ml NS over 5 hours. Coming to the sample history, uh, 54... 5 hours, 40 milli equivalents. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? What you are doing is correct or not? Uh, we have in case of hypokalemic periodic paralysis, we have to start rapid correction but for the patient. Little more rapid, so you, initially what you are told is correct. You have put a, a EJV and uh, you have started 40 minutes. And normally, after in the initial correction or initial starting period, you have to put a center line center. and start the actual correction because he has developed ECG problem, not uh, mm -hmm. because of the muscle problem. Muscle problem is already there, but he is not having respiratory paralysis. But he has developed ECG changes. 
that means he can develop arrhythmia at any time so it is better to correct it as fast as possible uh, because it's a emergency coming to the sample history 54 year old urine potassium urine spot potassium was 15 15 15 magnesium magnesium was normal 2.5 oh. uh, 54 year old understood from that uh, there was no renal loss of potassium in this patient mm. when the urine spot potassium is about 20 then we okay. can suspect urinary loss okay urinary loss is seen which all condition uh, it can be due to uh, uh, gi causes like uh, urine uh, no, uh, renal causes like intake of medicines like um, mineral or corticoids can be there diuretic use can be there in syndromes like butter syndrome gitelman syndrome can be there in cases of renal tubular acidosis it What can be there common condition where you have high bp urinary See. potassium loss hypokalemia what is a common condition what is a pathological condition commonly where will you see this renal tubular acidosis diuretics diuretics that is a commonest problem first we have to think about common problem what every day we are seeing is a patient is on a diuretic he will have hypertension he will have high bp he can have hypokalemia he can have increased urinary potassium okay there is a common condition but uh, uh, one of the most important condition is corn syndrome okay what you are told but uh, little man all these things are very rare condition but corn syndrome is relatively common condition 54 year old female presented to our er with complaints of bilateral upper limb and lower limb weakness since last two days weakness was acute in onset and more on the lower limbs patient was all uh, is a known case of hypokalemic lower limbs when you are telling lower limbs you have to tell whether it is a distal weakness or proximal it was more on the proximal okay. which muscle condition will have distal muscle weakness most of the myopathies in are uh, proximal lucian body myopathy, myopathy is a one condition where you get distal weakness mm-hmm. otherwise almost all myopathies are proximal weakness including this uh, hypokalemic periodic, periodic paralysis a uh, patient was a known case of hypokalemic periodic paralysis and was on potassium supplement since the last 4 years and patient had skipped the medication since last 2 weeks and there was also a history of climbing a hill prior to the onset of the weakness mm-hmm. um what is the relationship between exercise and hypokalemia during the strenuous exercise if the patient uh, goes then they can be a transcellular shift of the potassium mm-hmm. then uh, patient was initially evaluated at an outside hospital where a 40 milli equivalent correction was given mm. and even then the hypokalemia persisted hence she was referred to our hospital there was no history of any constipation no history of slurring of speech or facial deviation what is the importance of constipation in this condition because since the patient is having hypokalemia she may develop ileus no. Uh, then there was uh, what no investigation will tell you that patient is having ileus you can what take clinical finding what investigation uh, basically we can take an ch- uh, abdomen clinical x-ray finding. clinical finding there will be no bowel sounds okay. will not be there okay uh, this one investigation x-ray abdomen x-ray. erect can be taken okay. erect is required for ileus every word word when you are telling it should be correct is erect is required for ileus Yes or no? Erect is required only in intestinal obstruction. Obstruction, obstruction is okay. Now you can see the fluid level. Air, Air under the diaphragm. diaphragm. Okay, but that can be get in even in the uh, supine X-ray also. Mm-hmm. Fluid levels are most important, like in intestinal obstruction, obstruction. What you told, but here in uh, dilated bowel loops, even when you are lying down, you can see. So erect is not required. Uh, you, you can get a better view on erect. That's all. coming to the general examination uh, there was no pallor icterus cyanosis clubbing generalized lymphadenopathy or edema on cns examination gcs was 15 out of 15 pupils equal and reactive to light power upper limb there was 3 by 5 bilaterally and lower limb it was 2 by 5 there was no cerebellar uh, signs reflexes were uh, decreased uh, coming to the parabdomen it was soft non tender and cerebellar signs in this patient you cannot test mm-hmm. so don't tell that So naturally, you are creating a new window for the examiner. Mm-hmm. He will start uh, asking all these things. So it is not required. If power is any three or less than three, mm-hmm. you cannot get uh, cerebral cerebral findings at all. It will be wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
on per abdomen examination it was soft non tender and bowel sounds were heard uh, cvs e examination and respiratory system was within the normal limits what uh, what examination finding you want to see in respiratory system uh, whether the patient is uh, having tachypnea patient can have respiratory muscle paralysis yes. and can develop tachypnea okay uh then uh, we had then calculated kidney will produce what type of respiratory abnormalities alkalosis can be alkalosis. there hypokalemia can produce what type of abnormalities usually alkalosis okay. will be what there. is the finding here abg finding uh, here Have patient it? was having metabolic acidosis metabolic acidosis. acidosis so what else you think when you have a patient with uh, hypokalemia uh, muscle weakness if uh, patient is having metabolic acidosis what else you can suspect it may not be correct always what all other features you can suspect you should check for whether any secondary causes of hypokalemia is there that is renal tubular renal tubular acidosis is one of the strongest differential diagnosis then what all other conditions you can suspect what is the lactate here a uh, lactate was normal so lactate can be sometimes increased in this type of patients So that also should be checked. Okay. Then we had calculated the potassium deficit in the patient. The potassium level was one point six. So for every point three hundred milli equivalent uh, deficit can be calculated. So here uh, almost six sixty milli equivalent deficit was there. Okay. So we had put a central line for the patient and started correction hmm. of eighty. Uh, Do you think that six sixty milli equivalents are required in this patient? No. This because they can be transient it's only at according to the history and the clinical finding it is only a transient shift of potassium to the cell and uh, after sometimes normally it shift back so we have to be very careful in this type of patients sometimes they can go to hyperkalemia also okay. so we uh, we had given a correction of 80 milli equivalents in 500 ml uh, ns over 5 hours and 6 hourly serum potassium was uh, checked okay. and then uh, patient's uh, potassium level gradually increased from 1.6 to 4.2 and do you think that when we are correcting this uh, this much amount can the patient develop hyperkalemia is yes. it possible yes it is a basic knowledge yes is a basic knowledge If yes. the renal out Absolutely. urine output the is not output, good, then the urine output is good. Normally, body will not, not have course. dangerous levels of hyperkalemia. That is uh, because of our uh, system. System will try to remove the potassium, but even then, when you are giving la larger doses through the central line, there is a chance of arrhythmia. So you have to be very careful. But if you are giving slowly, then it will body will try to compensate. then uh, patient's potassium uh, increased from 1.6 to 4.2 okay. and then patient's weakness also improved, improved. Okay. and then patient was discharged with uh, advices of avoiding high carbohydrate uh, rich food then uh, uh, increase pot uh, potassium containing supplements to be taken what are the increase potassium supplements uh, she can take lemon papaya hmm. fruits hmm. like papaya banana okay. all can Any be fresh spinach fruit juice will have uh, high levels of potassium especially lemon juice that hmm. uh, This one high levels of potassium. Okay. Then uh, patient was told to avoid strenuous exercises, mm. and then uh, to uh, take on her potassium supplements. She okay. was initially on potassium supplements daily. Okay. What happened to the acidosis afterwards? Uh, it got corrected. It was normal. What was the reason for acidosis? Because Is of. Is there any reason for acidosis? Any respiratory acidosis associated or something like that? Nothing no. was there. No. Not find out the reason no. for acidosis. Had they given any uh, other drug uh, that hospital? No, nothing, nothing was given. Okay, tell something about hyperkalemic periodic paralysis. Uh, periodic paralysis mainly causes can be four types. Mm -hmm. It can be due to hyperkalemic. It can be due to hypokalemic. Then uh, thyrotoxicosis can be uh, causing. Then uh, Anderson syndrome can cause. In hypokalemic periodic paralysis, main uh, trigger factors will be. high carbohydrate intake strenuous exercise and stress mm. in uh, conditions so there we avoid carbohydrate rich food and then we give potassium supplements what in, is the action of nebulization in these patients uh, nebulization should be avoided because again it causes transcellular shift what of potassium what is the action of beta blocker in these patients uh, beta blockers uh, again shift will happen of potassium yeah. uh, shift out or shift in uh, shift in will happen Shift out. Shift, so shift out. out. Just opposite uh, of here. Uh, uh, nebulization. Yes, okay. Uh, so all these drugs also you should know. What all the drugs can be given, cannot be given. These things are very important. <coughs> okay. Uh, 
So if this patient develops wheeze, what will you give? Then in hyperkalemic periodic paralysis, it is due to the high potassium levels in the body. Hmm. So you should, uh, you can uh, give high carbohydrate rich food to the patient okay. and then uh, insulin uh, and dextrose can be given for the patient. Hmm. In thyrotoxicosis, periodic paralysis, it is due to the sensitization of the thyroid hormones to the calcium channels. So there we have to correct the thyrotoxicosis, then we can prefer for beta blockers like propanolol okay. and hypokalemia also should be corrected. Okay. In Anderson syndrome, it is a genetic uh, abnormality. So, there there will be a triad of the weakness will be there, dysrhythmias will be there and uh, uh, abnormality, the dysmorphic changes will be there. Okay. Uh, these are the four causes of, main causes of the periodic paralysis. Okay. Is this patient is having family history? No, no family history as such is there. Okay. This, but this was the third episode for the patient. How to prevent uh, further episodes, what advice you are given to the patient? Uh, one potassium rich food should be taken, okay. prevent high carbohydrate rich meals hmm. and then uh, to continue the potassium supplements. Uh, if the patient is having urinary loss of potassium, what is the drug of choice? Spironolactone can be given what for the patient. What else you can give? What is, the side? what is the side effect of uh, spironolactone? Water, water, water loss also. Gynecomastia is the most important side. That's why we are selecting hmm. epileron. That, that has got lesser incidence of that. Okay. What else you want to add? Anything else? Nothing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.